In 2025, there are more handwriting note-taking apps than ever, but GoodNotes still gets most of the attention. Our database is still a work in progress, but for the apps we've fully analyzed so far, GoodNotes stands out as one of the most complete. Today we're testing what really matters. How good is the actual note-taking experience in GoodNotes 6 for 2025? GoodNotes 6 is the only third-party app you can find on any platform you pick up. macOS, iPadOS, iOS, Android, Windows, and this year it got a web version. It is the most expensive handwriting note-taking app on the iPad at $30 for a one-time purchase. If you need it across ecosystems for Android or Windows, then it's a subscription. $10 a year. You can also pay the subscription even if you stick to the Apple ecosystem, just to support the developers. We tried the app on Android before though. It is not as brilliant as its iPad version. You typically view your notes on it, then create them there. The Windows version we haven't had the privilege to try, sadly. But for anyone using different operating systems, you'll be happy to simply have your notes syncing across them. The only other app to offer such a setup is OneNote by Microsoft. Those are really the only two options you have. We recently ranked the user experience of the top handwriting apps, and GoodNotes just missed the cut. It landed at number six. Aside from its customizable, Edge Anchor Toolbar, which you can move to the bottom, there isn't much that stands out. It's functional, but nothing particularly exciting. It would be great if we could access our notebook library from within the workspace. Do any of you guys feel like you'd want to change the theme colors? It is a great aesthetic to have, but I wouldn't lose sleep over it. Full screen mode is important though. Sometimes you just want to get rid of all the noisy tools. It helps when you can easily tuck them away. The built-in page templates are pretty basic for such an expensive app. Cheap apps offer so much more. GoodNotes 6 makes up for that though with some impressive customization. You can adjust page sizes and colors to just about anything you can imagine including pages up to 176 centimeters or 5,000 points wide. That is the most flexible custom page setup you will get in a handwriting note-taking app in 2025. You also get page covers with custom colors, which is a nice bonus. Line spacing is pretty limited. We are stuck with the fixed options that come with each page template. They're not much, given how basic the page templates are to begin with. Custom page templates aren't great either. You can only save single pages from PDFs or images. We should at least be able to save complete PDFs, so we don't have to keep importing digital notebooks and planners that we use often. At least we can mix portrait and landscape pages in the same notebook. And if none of that works for you, there is always the in-app store. Maybe you'll find something better there, for your price of course. The app has four pens, ballpoint, fountain, brush, and calligraphy. I can't decide which one I prefer between the fountain and brush pen. Your tip for the fountain pen is not the sharpest, neither is it adjustable. You also don't get stroke variation, but at least the ballpoint pen supports dotted and dash strokes. GoodNotes 6 does not have an opacity option for your pens or a favorite toolbar. A favorite toolbar would make switching between pens a lot easier. It's unbelievable the app still doesn't have this in 2025. Your pen thickness range is very narrow between 0.1 to 2 millimeters, 
but you can definitely find one that works for you. I can't help but feel the pen should be a little thicker though. Not necessarily for handwriting your notes, but for other things like diagrams, for example. Motion smoothness improves the handwriting feel for your pens, and we're happy to see it in GoodNotes 6. It has become my personal favorite feature for the pen tool in handwriting note taking apps. Pressure sensitivity also helps. And you have a decent pencil and highlighter. GoodNotes 6 now supports the scribble to erase gesture for your eraser. It is my least favorite feature because it's usually a hit and miss. Lately, it has been in GoodNotes 6, but not nearly as bad as it can be. You can erase per pixel and stroke. Auto deselect is available. Little is missing. You can also clear entire pages. But the eraser in GoodNotes isn't as selective as it ought to be. You can only selectively erase the highlighter and tape, which is not enough considering all the items that you can add to the app. You can zoom directly on the page or use the zoom tool. The zoom range for both is not bad, but without a zoom percentage display on the screen, it's difficult to use the tool because you never know how zoomed in you are. For the zoom window, you have auto advance and a variable margin, which helps. Using multiple pens in GoodNotes 6 is still a huge pain in 2025. A Favros toolbar is really a must-have when we get only three pens on the toolbar. More free page templates would be nice, but probably not a massive deal-breaker. But for cross-platform access of your notes, GoodNotes is the only other app you have apart from OneNote. Is this the kind of app you need for your workflow? Do let us know. Until next time, fantastic human, stay fantastic.